While you are working on your art, it's possible to automatically create a time-lapse video that you can use to show your progress. Rather than capture everything, including the Procreate interface, only snapshots of your canvas are recorded. When played back, the result is a replay of your canvas as it evolved from beginning to end. You'll need to choose the time-lapse settings before starting a new painting, since you cannot change them midway through. You can do this under the Custom Canvas settings. If you've already started a canvas, then you can view the canvas information from the Actions menu to see which settings you are using. By default, a 1080p video at good quality will be created in an H.264 format. Essentially, time-lapse is going to take a snapshot of your canvas each time you paint a stroke or make a significant change. The resolution determines the size of the image captured, and quality determines how much these images are compressed to make the video file size smaller. You can choose a higher video recording resolution if you like. However, keep in mind the size of the canvas you are using. If it is larger than the video recording, you'll lose some detail. If the canvas is smaller than the video recording, then it could make the details blurry when they are resized to fit. Choosing a higher video resolution than your canvas won't make your artwork more detailed. It will just make the file size unnecessarily larger. If the aspect ratio of your canvas doesn't match the video size, black bars will be added to the sides of your video with the canvas centered. Ideally, you'd choose the same canvas size as your video, but that's not always practical, especially if your work is on a vertical canvas. Just try to get the video as close to the canvas size as possible, even if it's just one dimension like the height or width. Next, choose the quality of the video. Low and good quality will sacrifice some image detail, but the file size will be smaller. This is a fine option if you don't care about preserving all of the detail in your work and you just want to share it without the file being too large to upload or email. You may not even see much of a difference between good and something higher, so it may not be worth choosing a higher setting. Studio quality and lossless will create much larger videos. You shouldn't notice any loss in detail with these modes. HEVC is a more efficient compression mode which creates smaller video sizes without an additional loss in quality. The downside is that HEVC may not be compatible with some applications, websites, or devices. So if you want to play it safe, just stick with H.264. There are two main approaches to recording a time lapse, which will help you decide which settings to choose. First, you may just want the recording as a way to view your progress. It's not something you'll be sharing or uploading as content to YouTube. In this case, the resolution matching your canvas size isn't that important. If there are black bars on the sides, that's okay. The quality isn't so important either. Good is probably just fine, and if your device supports playback of HEVC video, then you may as well save some storage space. Another approach to time-lapse recording is for sharing videos online. If you're posting your work to YouTube, then you want a professional-looking recording. It might be best to fill the screen by matching the canvas to the video resolution exactly. Quality is also very important, not only because low detail looks unprofessional, but also because if you will be editing the video further, it will get compressed again when you export the final product, and again when YouTube processes your video. In this case, I would highly recommend studio quality or lossless. You probably won't see a difference between studio and lossless, but lossless will give you more peace of mind. If your video editing application supports HEVC, then you may as well use it to save storage space. Otherwise, H.264 is fine. I'll create a demonstration recording so we can see the entire process. I'll choose 1920 by 1080 for both the canvas and the resolution. For the quality, I'll choose Studio since this is just a demonstration. I won't be keeping this file, so it doesn't matter if I choose HEVC or not. Once I tap on Create, the time lapse will begin as soon as I make a mark on the canvas. This will inevitably result in some unwanted footage like undos and erasing that you may want to omit later in a video editing application. I'll paint a simple line art flower and fill it with color. It's not necessary to complete the artwork in one session because the recording will pick up where you left off. When I am finished, I can preview it from the Actions menu under Video Time-Lapse Replay. You can also go back to the gallery and hover over the canvas. The time-lapse will play back every stroke I made. 
Since I did very few steps, my video isn't very long at only one second. The more strokes you make, the longer the video will be. I'll add some hatching lines to make it a bit longer, then preview it again. Now it's longer, but still only lasts a few seconds. You can drag on the preview to rewind and fast forward. You can also zoom in and out. From the Actions menu, you can also temporarily disable time-lapse recording, and whatever you do will not be added to the video. You'll be asked if you want to purge the existing video. This will delete the video recording so you can start fresh. If you just want to pause the recording, don't select this. To start capturing again, enable time-lapse recording. I'll also remind you that you can add private layers for references and images you don't want to appear in the time-lapse recording. I covered this in my lesson about guides. To export the video, choose Export Time-lapse Video. You can choose Full Length or 30 seconds. The latter is only available if you captured enough strokes to fill that amount of time. If you chose 30 seconds but you captured a long painting, some frames will be discarded. An algorithm helps to preserve the earlier frames since they tend to reflect the most drastic changes. Next, choose a destination to export your video. You can save it to your iPad or cloud storage. If you'll be editing it, then I'd recommend your iPad storage. Now that this video has been exported, you can play it back. You can see that a preview of the final painting shows at the beginning of the video. You can share this video or upload it as is. However, you may want to remove some footage or change the playback speed. You can do this using a third-party video editing application like iMovie or Adobe Premiere Rush. There are also more robust editors available for desktop computers. If I slow this video down, then it becomes choppy since there aren't very many frames. If I show you a longer illustration, then you can see how I can slow it down and it still remains somewhat smooth. This is not the only way, nor is it the best way to create a time lapse or record your art. You can also use the screen recording feature on your iPad to record your canvas, brush cursor, and the Procreate UI. This isn't as elegant as capturing only the canvas, but it makes for a smoother playback and allows you to show more detail in terms of your techniques and the tools you used. If you're aiming for more of a tutorial than an exhibition, then this is the way to go. I'll also mention that there is a global Procreate setting that disables time-lapse recording if you don't ever plan on using it. However, you might consider leaving it enabled because it serves as sort of a backup in case something detrimental happens to your work. You might be able to pull a still image from your recording, which would be better than starting over.